The young man standing right next to me is a 25 year old death metal guitarist. Is that right? That is correct. But we are here to see Luju Ojha because he is the person who has shown the world that there is water on Mars. Now, Luju, tell us, we've been hearing about there being water on Mars for many years now, but this time it's special. Why is that? Yeah, it's very special because, yeah, we've been hearing about it for a long time. I mean, even if you go back 100 years ago, I mean, you know, there was speculation that there was some sort of water activity going on on the Mars, Martian surface. But this time we've actually looked at the surface of Mars with uh, a instrument called spectrometer. And we've actually found chemical evidence that there's water. So now these are not morphological or geological evidence. We actually observe molecular water on the surface. So. It's a it's a more of a very unambiguous detection this time. Um, there's there's no proof for error here now. And also there's water on the planet as we speak. It's not about there once having been water, atmosphere and so on on the surface of Mars, but there's water on it right now. That is correct. Uh, we've been observing these features since 2010. That's when they were first discovered. And uh, even as late as you know, a couple of months ago, we were seeing this uh, uh, brine uh, flowing on the surface of Mars. So this is today. This is right now. We're not talking about millions of years ago. We're not talking about billions of years ago. We're talking today. And is this water like the water we have on Earth? Can we drink it? Can it be used in the way in which we use water here? Yeah, and that's a, that's a great question. And it's, all, uh, it's only going to be um, limited by chemistry. Uh, we think the water is probably not pure and it's uh, probably salty. Then in that case, so you can imagine being in Indian Ocean or Pacific Ocean and trying to drink that water. I mean, it's going to have a little bit, you know, problem. So uh, we really need to understand the chemistry first. We think the water is salty, and if it's very salty, I don't think we can drink it. But we should definitely be able to, uh, you know, use it as a resource in the future when we need it. So basically, this discovery of yours is creating a kind of. Uh you know, on Twitter and on social media, uh, we've been hearing from people that they feel like aliens on Earth, so they are already planning to go to Mars. Now, what would your advice be to people who are already uh, planning to buy that ticket to Mars? Because there are some missions that are being planned uh, in a decade from now. Yeah, um, you know, exploration, I think, is in our genes, and it is only natural for us humans to explore. I mean, you can see the exploration, exploration history here in the world itself, but you really want to be careful that you're doing exploration for what reason and who you're going through. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a, that's a great pursuit. You could probably claim a free ticket. Would you go, and what would you pack in your bag if you went? If I could claim a free ticket, I would go in a heartbeat there would be no second decision for me. I mean, it would be like one thing, yeah, I would be going. Um, what would I pack in my backpack? I think I would probably pack my guitar um, or, I don't know, beer. <laughs> and in 10 years' time, you'll grow back your hair. Why did you cut it? Um, I cut it because of my mom. Yeah, oh. my mother wasn't happy, so. So, but you're growing it back now. I'm growing it back now. Yeah, so my mother will not be happy again, so. But that's okay. all right. Coming back to Mars, uh, now we've heard that there was a time mm -hmm. uh, when Mars had this great atmosphere in terms of, you right. know, uh, and also that there was plenty of water on it. Right. Uh, but now, if there's water on Mars, do you think there could be life forms there? And what could actually make it livable or not? Why is it so difficult to figure that out? <clears throat> Yeah, so the first part of your question is, is there life? And that is a holy grail question for humanity. We've been trying to figure that out for, you know, hundreds of years now. But we're one step closer maybe to being able to well, address can, that question. Right, all we can really say is that we found places on Mars where we think there is water and water has been the water on Earth, you know, is, is a great resource for living beings. So, you know, all we can really say is that these places promise uh, great, uh, you know, places on Mars where there might be present day life. And that's all we can say. Uh, we, we really need to do a lot more work. We've only detected water. We haven't detected life. And our implication is that, yeah, if you find life, it's going to have implication for, you know, if you find water, it's going to have implication for life. So we need to do further characterization of these features. Tell me, uh, is it true that uh, when you were back in Nepal, right. Uh, you were really young and at that time uh, you used to play the guitar and then you right. told yourself that this was not 
something that was getting you enough money and so you decided you'll become a scientist is that how this happened <laughs> well i think like in the pursuit for science was always there um and, and it was actually uh, you know playing guitar in nepal and in the united states uh yeah i mean it, you know economic reasons make people do different things in life and take different uh, course of actions and dreams um yeah but i mean you know it was there but i think like the mo the bigger motivating factor was just the the passion and love for science itself rather than me being poor or anything like that right studying things that are so far away the distance right. is there also something poetic or spiritual about your work because to, to a lot of us it seems very difficult to decipher how sitting on earth can you figure out uh, what's happening uh, you know in, in outer space and also uh, coming back to the water on mars uh, how did you figure out that this was liquid water and so on i mean for the lay person how do we understand this yeah, so there's uh, layers of question in that, and the first thing goes to like, when is there anything poetic or profound or spiritual? And I would definitely say there's something poetic about it. I think there's something beautiful about it. I mean, um, you know, if you if you uh, you know think about it, we came from stardust. We are nothing other than stardust, culmination into some sort of conscious being. And I think there's like something beautiful about it. Is there anything spiritual? Uh, maybe to a spiritual person it might be spiritual. I'm not spiritual, so for me it's not spiritual. Um, and the other question is, you know, is it poetic? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a sense of inspiration for me. It's a source of inspiration for me, so I think that's beautiful. In terms of how we found out that it's liquid, uh, a great example is, for example, if you go out right now and look at a tree, you're going to see the leaf, um, you know, leaves on the tree are in green color. Mm -hmm. The reason that is, I mean, our eyes can see red color. I can see the red mic. I can see the yellow, I can see the pink, I can see the blue, but the reason that the leaf looks green is that because it absorbs all the other colors our eyes can see and it reflects the green color. That's exactly what we did on Mars. We looked and we observed our data, we went to the lab, compared it to whole suits of many different things, and then we found the results. So what does a scientist like you do in his spare time, especially if death metal is his thing? I mean, you know, the, the, <laughs> I don't you know. still play? Uh, you know, I, I play in my spare time, definitely. So now this is a big thing that's happened now. But what is the next step in your research? Yeah, I think the next step, uh, you know, we, we've sort of like identified that these things are water. Now the next step is figuring out where the water is coming from. Um, we don't know that. Is the water coming from the Martian atmosphere? Is it coming from the subsurface? Is it coming from the surface? So we don't know that. Oh. So we need to figure out where that source of water is. And also the other thing is like, we need to figure out exactly how much water are we talking about? Are we talking about a liter, like a Coke bottle or, you know, a gallon or like- It could be know? as little as just a small bottle. We don't know. I mean, well, we just don't know how thick those water layers are. So um, yeah, so that's something we really need to figure out how much water exactly there is. And uh, perhaps the other, you know, bigger implication is, um, you know, how we're going to be using this water um, for astrobiology and just like a human habitability in the future. So those are those are kind of like the, you know, the big implication question that we need to figure out now. All right. Thank you so very much for talking to NDTV much. Luju. Thank yeah. you.